This is an America's Transportation Awards 2014 Top 10 Project Profile. This morning we are going to open the final roadway that was closed as a part of the flooding. That is an applause line, by the way. <laughs> I hope the legacy that we leave them as a department is that CDOT stepped up. CDOT was there for the community. When I first started talking with Don Hunt uh, about you know how could how long would it take CDOT to really rebuild all these roads? This is probably 75 days ago, 80 days ago. Uh, right, I mean, literally while the, 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 it was still raining, the notion that we could actually get all the roads open by December 1st was, we knew it was going to be a huge stretch. Today's been a great day. I've been looking forward to this day. Uh, we, we always were focused on December 1st. Uh, when I heard that we could open up the last road on the 26th of November, it was very gratifying. I think all of us realize there's never going to be another, uh, you know, it's likely there's never going to be another project like this. When you think about the event on September 11th into September 18th, the maintenance crews that stepped up in the beginning, not one loss of life on our roads. Because they, their due diligence, their knowledge, they got out there, closed the roads in time, they protected, they evacuated people. Came through town and the water was coming over bridges. What the plan was at that point was to use our big trucks to get the swift water rescue teams around. Once the National Guard got here, uh, we helped them up at the schoolhouse with uh, evacuees. The people with medical issues, we you know loaded trucks and helped them get out of here. And Things look good from the roadway surface, but when I went uh, upstream a little ways, noticed that uh, 30 feet of embankment was washed out behind the abutments. So the road was just kind of hanging in the air. Got a hold of some other maintenance guys and we got that closed pretty quick. We had a lot of debris start to build up in structures. So that was our first response was to get the debris removed uh, to relieve the pressure off some of our, our bridges. I remember one point, um, and, it, and it still kind of gets me, but just um, kind of coming around the corner and just seeing no highway at all. So just, just where to scour down the bedrock. this event, roads went missing, uh, people were cut off, and it wasn't just localized to the mountains, it went out to the eastern plains. On Friday morning, they sent out a reverse 911 to evacuate our offices, and um, that was the last time we got into our office. So uh, people lost their personal cars if they were out on roadblock, and if they weren't on roadblock, they lost their state cars. I'm so proud of my people. I mean, I think uh, we've we lost our offices. We had people suffer uh, loss of their personal property. And, um, but the bottom line is we still had a job to do. Well, we got all the contractors on board. Uh, we assessed which direction we needed to go and, and how to procure those contractors and figure out what areas were the most damaged so we could get people responding there first. For two to three weeks after that, we were running uh, seven days a week, 15, 16 hours a day. And then what was, neat, what was really neat about it is we had volunteers from all over the state. They had volunteers from Grand Junction. We had volunteers from Durango, Alamosa. So you had people who never worked with each other before. And Everybody came together and just became a cohesive team so quick. That was the, uh, the impressive part. We had a lot of people in motel rooms for periods of time. And, uh, and then once they got done with the flooded front range, they had to go back home to the eastern where their, their areas was being impacted. Driving through the neighborhood, seeing, seeing what had happened to the office, seeing all of the neighbors out there, you know, they'd lost everything. They'd lost their homes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh. <laughs> a lot of people, town people, uh, have been stopping by and telling us thank you and just everybody the whole town. I had a, uh, a young mom and her daughter run up and hand me a bag of cookies with a, uh, a 
label on it that says, you are our hero. And I can't think of anything more humbling than being handed something like that. It's really the human aspect that matters. We've, we've opened up roads, but we did it to get people back to their homes, to their businesses. We did it for all, for the people. All the employees who weren't able to be on the front lines, who have been down at headquarters, who have been out in the other regions, who have been helping pick up the slack for the people who've been up here, they need thank you too because they've done more than they'll ever know. Our people take this to heart. This is, this is their livelihood. This is what they do, and, and it means a lot to them. They take a lot of pride in what they do. Some of these, these people are the most dedicated hard workers that I've ever worked with. And the debt that the state of Colorado owes to the employees of CDOT is, is beyond words, right? 10,000 phone calls answered, 5,000 people participated in you know, teleconferences. CDOT went so far beyond what anybody could have expected. You know, they overpromised and then they overdelivered. This brought the heart back. I really hope that it keeps going and that the passion of what people have experienced in trying to get this job done continues on. The disaster does not determine our culture. Our culture determines how we're going to handle the disaster. And every single one of them stepped up. Every single one of them. Colorado United, CDOT United. Thank you for all your work. Find out more about the competition at americastransportationawards.org.